Hi everyone, Colleen here. In this one, I'm going to be discussing some alternate day fasting mistakes you may be making that may hinder your progress or make fasting more difficult, slow down your results, and maybe even backfire on you in the long run. So here are five mistakes you may be making while alternate day fasting. So number one is a big one I see all the time and it's it's not good. It's over fasting. Fasting beyond your set protocol. Whether you're doing any type of intermittent fasting beyond 16-8, such as the warrior diet, which is 20 hours fasting, four hours feasting, OMAD, which is 23 hours fasting, one hour feasting, alternate day fasting, which is around a 36 hour stretch of fasting or beyond, people feel like doing more will get them better results and it's not necessarily the case. I like to distinguish the difference between fasting for health and fasting for weight loss. They're two different beasts and in my Facebook group, which I have an alternate day Facebook group in which share tips, tricks, inspiration. If you're interested, there's a link below. It's free to join. All you need is a Facebook account. I run into a, quite a few people fasting way beyond the fasting protocol hours. As a rule in the group, no fasting beyond 48 hours. No fasting beyond 48 eight hours in my group. Uh, we focus on weight loss and we focus on fat burn. When you start to fast beyond 48 hours, you are now tapping into like health and fasting to reduce inflammation. You're fasting to uh, reverse diabetes, lower sugar and insulin levels, lower blood pressure. You're kicking off a lot of autophagy, growing your growth hormone and a lot of awesome things, a lot of awesome benefits but not necessarily, this is not to say that you won't, but not necessarily weight loss if that is your focus because what the body starts to think now is that is in famine mode and that it doesn't know when its next meal is coming, especially if you're not in a pattern. A very important part of intermittent fasting is the intermittent part, which is a pattern. You want to do this so your body starts expecting when it's going to go into fast and when it's going to go into feast. If you are overeating one day, then you fast for two days, then you eat and then you fast for half of the day, your body is not going to start acclimating to the pattern. What happens is it starts to hold on to fat. You will backfire because your body is not sure if it should hold on or release fat. So stick to a 48 hour cap, especially for weight loss when fasting. Don't want your body to think it's going into famine mode and hold on to fat. It wants, the beautiful thing about fasting is the fat burning aspect. So to efficiently burn fat, um, lose inches, sculpt the face, define the muscles, start your pattern, stick to it, and do not over fast. If you break your fast early, do not fast for two days. Just stick to a 48 hour cap and um, you should expect better results more than over fasting. I did an experiment with Lumen, which is a device that hacks your metabolism. It kind of tells you um, when you're in fat burning mode and when you're in carb burning mode. And um, I realized that around a 20 hour period is when I, I'm in fat burning mode. And when I went over into 36 hours, 38 hours, I was in a car burning mode because the body does get stressed and starts to switch. The body can stress when in starvation mode. So you wanna play around and see what's the best method for you, what feels good and stick to it. The second mistake that you may be making on your alternate day fasting journey is overweighing yourself. Overweighing yourself is a great way to sabotage yourself ultimately. A lot of people put a lot of focus on the numbers and they define themselves by the number, associate with the number, they are the number. I am the number on the scale. You're not the number on your scale. What the number on the scale represents is data, information, their numbers. Because of diet culture and um, mentality, unfortunately got caught up in a lot of stress on the numbers. But when you're in a health journey, the biggest focus should be on health. If you're doing what you need to do towards health, weight loss will come. The biggest part about overweighing yourself is that you're putting unrealistic expectations on a, a very short time frame. 
It's not that you're not gonna lose weight, it's that you wanna do it fast. And that's where you screw yourself. You, you put an effort and you feel that your effort deserves massive results. You're not entitled to that. You, you have to be realistic about weight loss. It takes 3,500 calories to lose one pound. And if you're fasting for one day, as a woman, the average total calories a woman would take in on an average American diet would be 2,000 a day. So you would have to fast for at least two days a week just to lose a pound and a half. It's time to start making sense of weight loss. I know we want weight loss schemes. I know we want surgeries. I know we want to suck it, tuck it, and put it away. But there is a satisfaction in calling it a journey because it truly is a journey. It's a journey that it's it takes time. It took me eight months to lose 60 pounds and that is above average. There's people that online that are losing 40 pounds in two months, 20 pounds in one month. That's good for them. Very short term. You lose it quick, you'll most likely gain it back quick. 60 pounds in eight months, I took my time. And honestly, that's still aggressive. It's time to put the scale away, start focusing on your health, start focusing on nutrition, proper health. You know what good nutrition is. Don't even wonder what to eat. Focus on what you know is, is healthy. Start looking to fix ailments. Start breaking generational cycles like diabetes, high cholesterol, strokes, arthritis dementia, all those things can be broken in this cycle. Start worrying about your blood work. Start worrying about how your pants fit. Start worrying about your energy levels in the middle of the day. Start worrying about your mental health and what's triggering you to want to eat. Those are wonderful non-scale victories that doesn't come in the form of a number. Get waist beads. See how your ring fits. All these things are little things that makes you smile more than the number because guess what you're going to look at the number and you're going to be deterred instantly if the num if the scale is not going to tell you what you want to see that day you're going to feel some kind of way do not overweigh yourself do not take the sabotage path take your time do it right put the scale away at least two weeks at a time at least two weeks at a time so when you do jump on the scale and you've been doing what you know you're supposed to be doing you'll get a big reward such as like seven pounds off in a month. That's beautiful. Why do you want to see how much you weigh every day or every week for that matter? It's not worth it. Do yourself the mental favor. Stop overweighing yourself. Mistake number three is not knowing your why. If you go into anything and you don't know your why, you will fall off. If your why is not strong, you will fall off. If you are flimsy about your why, you will fall off. No doubt about it. Your why has to carry you through the journey, not the sprint, but the marathon. Whether your why be deep and important or your why is shallow and silly, silly, quote unquote, because nobody's why is nobody's why is silly i don't care your why needs to be strong that's all it needs to be when you decide to change your life there usually is something behind it and it's usually something traumatic dramatic usually something that um, hurt your feelings or just lit a fire under you that's what you need to remember in order to stay on track because if your why is flimsy you'll just walk away from it whether it be school, career path, a business venture, your why has to carry you. So your why can be, I want to prevent diabetes. I want to have more energy to keep up with my kids. Your why can be, my ex thought I was fat and ugly and I wanna prove him wrong. Your why could be, I wanna look sexy for my 60th birthday. There's nothing wrong with your why. It just has to carry you through. It has to keep you going. Please think about why you are venturing into this because if you just watch this video or a video of mine or alternate day fasting video and be like, oh, that seems like something I could do. Don't do it. Don't do it. I want you to be sick of yourself when you, when you decide to start on this. I want you to be so sick of yourself. I want you to be tired of yourself. I want you to be tired of what you see in the mirror. I want you to be on your last legs, my last resort. I want you to be fed up. I want you to be tired of what's being served at the table. Your back is against the wall because that's when change happens. That's when the transformation occurs. I find, I find it all the time. It's usually something traumatic that is going to bolster your why. If your why ain't strong, don't bother. I'm serious. 
keep carrying the why. Number four mistake that you may be making while alternate day fasting is you're not refueling on feast days. Feast days are feast days, right? Refueling is a different term. They're two different terms. Refueling is a mindset. You're the car, you're the Rolls Royce, you're the Bentley. You're not the Toyota, you're not the Nissan. Think of yourself as a luxury vehicle. Refuel it with premium gas. That means high quality food. You're eating every other day, right? And I know inflation is high and, and you know everybody's trying to get by with what they can. Do your best to feed yourself premium, high quality, nutrient dense food. There's dirty foods that almost like require you to buy organic if you can. Go organic on blueberries, spinach, um, you know, potatoes and those kind of things. Do your do your best to load up on quality goods, premium cuts of meat if you eat meat, high quality eggs. I want you to refuel so you have the nutrients, you have all your essential vitamins, you um, are full, you're satisfied. You will never be satisfied on empty calories. Of course you could enjoy a treat. Of course, I want you to enjoy your treat. Your feast days are supposed to be fun and there's a lot of wiggle room to enjoy treats, but it's not a replacement, it's in addition to. Have a, a hearty breakfast, enjoy a, a very nutrient dense lunch and dinner, have your treats on top. Your meals should not be processed foods. It should not. It shouldn't be like chicken, breaded chicken patties. It shouldn't be McDonald's. It should not. It shouldn't. Or you will feel empty. You'll feel cloudy. You'll feel fatigued. You'll feel dizzy out of it, honestly, because your body is just not getting the essential vitamins it needs to run for two days. That's the day you eat and the following fast day. So please, please treat your feast days as importantly as you treat your fast days. Start planning your meals. Start meal prepping, making batch meals, having it stored in the freezer. You don't wanna waste food, put it in the freezer. Unfreeze it as needed. Protein, your fats, complex carbs preferably. Get your greens in. Get your greens in, whether you blend them, juice them, chew them. You must get your greens in. I love fruit. I eat fruit. I love fruit. That's why I'll never be keto, because I love fruit. But it's important to start prepping for your feast days, because winging it usually will end up in um, bad choices, not the best decisions meal-wise. Okay, so make sure you refuel properly. So the number five mistake I see quite often in my group is fasting two days in a row. Oh no, I messed up, it's 2 p.m. I'm gonna fast two days, you know, since I messed up or I ate too much and now I'm gonna fast two days in a row to make up for the excess calorie. Don't, don't fast two days in a row because you're gonna need the calories. You're going to need the calories. People have demonized calories. Calories literally means energy. The type of calories is what you what you choose, but calories are energy, and you're going to need energy to feel like yourself while fasting. If you're fasting two days in a row, it's not necessary, unless you're working on health. If you, if you break the fast early, just carry on eating throughout the day, preferably low carb, so you could stay in ketosis at least, right? In the fat burning mode, instead of using glycogen, you're using fats, ketones, as your fuel source, right? If you break your fast early, stay in ketosis by finishing out the day low carb. Do not turn the next day into a fast because you broke your fast early the previous day. Once again, do not turn your next day into a fast day if you broke your fast early the previous day. Continue with the pattern. Pattern is meant to be followed. Keep the calories because for half of that day, half of the day, you were not eating. And then you have a half of the day you were eating. All it's gonna do you're just gonna build it back up. You're, you're filling your tank again and you'll empty it out another day because as you go on with your journey, I want you to kind of understand this. As you continue alternate day fasting, eventually you'll your tank will run empty. If you're on it long enough, you will get fatigued. Say you've started in the beginning of the month. By the end of the month alternate day fasting, you'll have emptied a good portion of your calorie stores. And sometimes a refeed is necessary. Sometimes you'll need two days where you need to just eat just to get your stores back up because you're gonna start to feel fatigued. You're gonna start to feel empty because ultimately alternate day fasting is a low calorie protocol. Like your calories in versus calories out, it, there's a huge deficit. There's a massive deficit, okay? 
Alternate day fasting is one of the most aggressive protocols. But if you're a black and white person like I am, an all or nothing person, it's super easy to just be like, okay, I'm not eating today, I'll eat the next day. Okay, I'm not eating today, I'll eat again the next day. That's all you have to worry about. You don't have to time, you don't have to clock anything. You're going to run out of calories. So don't do that to yourself by fasting two days in a row. Just continue with the pattern. Your body will start to get acclimated to it and you won't even have to worry too much about breaking your fast early anymore. Um, if you're interested in clean fasting, I have a clean fasting. Um, um, video to understand more about that. The author, Jen Stevens, Feast, Fast, Repeat. Her book is a wonderful resource. If you're serious about alternate day fasting, you need to check out Jen Stevens. If you're serious about alternate day fasting, try to avoid these mistakes. Don't make the process harder than it needs to be. It's It can be so simple. It could all be so simple. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and you learned something valuable. And share if you think somebody else will benefit from this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.